Ron Perlman. Oh, f yeah, Ron Perlman. I think that he got made uh, the Beast in Beauty and the Beast just because he was like the guy that required the least makeup. You know, Ron, uh, it's it's crazy to see this these days in Hollywood, but we really applaud you coming in costume to the audition. <laughs> Welcome to Upsides, I'm your host Matt Ufford, joined by my pals Will the Sound Guy, Alex the Fact Checker Dude. What are you doing? I mean, I just... I don't... This chair sucks. There's another chair right there. <laughs> this entire studio is chairs. It, but there's I don't even have a chair. Hey, the NFL playoffs are coming up. We love the NFL playoffs. They're great. I don't want to overhaul them, but they could use some tweaks. They're pretty good, but... Not great. The AFC playoff picture is... The Steelers, the Patriots, the third best team is led by Blake Bortles. And then you've got like a rotting dog carcass and then the Ravens. I would rather rip my eyes out on camera with my bare hands than have to watch the Ravens in a playoff game. The only good play that the Ravens have on offense is actually a fake punt. Dude, since they won the Super Bowl, he's been averaging not even six and a half yards per attempt. You know who hasn't averaged under six and a half yards per attempt? Blaine Gabbert, Blake Bortles, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Geno Smith, Brian Hoyer, Trevor Simeon. Joe Flacco sucks. Our fix so that a great, a very good NFC team isn't left out in the cold while the Ravens and hot garbage get into the playoffs on the other side of the bracket is this. Anytime a division winner doesn't get to nine wins or there's a 10 win team left out of the playoff picture, boom, triggers the NFL playoff committee. A group of intelligent, thorough, smart people is going to decide who should exactly be in the playoffs. Now Matt, there's probably a lot of viewers at home that are saying, there was a lot of words there. Yeah. But I hope they, like me, will just go along for the ride. Yeah, who's gonna be on this committee, Will? Two out of the five regulars from Shark Tank should be on it. Who's good at selecting? Well, obviously us. Me, yeah. Alex, and the next commissioner, Will Bukema. Hello. Of the NFL. I also had, like, Jesus, Marshawn Lynch, and Barack Obama. I also may have copy and pasted the three people I wanted to invite to dinner. I haven't thought about the committee's size or makeup yet, but it's smart people. Smart, this is the smartest people. Some historical precedents here, like because we have had several teams win terrible divisions with crap records. Who are we? Who would be left out? So we got 2010 Seahawks made it at not seven and nine. Bucks at ten and six didn't deprived us of Josh Freeman, playoff quarterback. We Team. really, we really missed out on <laughs> history there. 2014, the Panthers had an 11-week stretch where they won one game and still made the playoffs. That team is hot garbage. People are gonna have problems with our brilliant, brilliant plan. They're gonna say. Hey, this potentially sets up a Super Bowl where it's two teams from the same conference. And to that I'd say, so? Who gives a f It's the NFL. People are like, I'm a big fan of the NFC. I'm a big fan of the AFC. No, it's, you're just, it's all the NFL. The 2013 NFC Championship played in 2014. Seahawks and 49ers were the best teams in the NFL. And then two weeks later, there was like a crap Super Bowl that where the Broncos got steamrolled. If we take an NFC team, place it into the AFC playoff picture, and that NFC team steamrolls through uh, three away games to the AFC. Well, that's the f AFC's fault. Let's do everything we can to keep Joe Flacco out of the playoffs. How do we do that though, Matt? I have an idea for any team that is eliminated from the playoffs may lease or loan their quarterback to a playoff team with a crappy quarterback. Let's say Blake Bortles. The Jaguars are like, hey, we made the playoffs with Bortles. That's an accomplishment. But now that we have to play real football games against good teams, we're going to send a third round draft pick to the Chargers and Phillip Rivers is gonna be our quarterback for the playoffs. What it could have done for us in the previous years. We could have had Drew Brees playing for the Raiders instead of Connor Cook. Oh, well, they only have six days to learn the, the playbook. I'll take Drew Brees, any previous year to 2017 that the Saints sucked. Drew Brees with six days of learning a playbook over Connor Cook. Yup. Look, we're all throwing really good ideas out there. I think it's my time to shine. Yeah. Make the Pro Bowl worse. We need more, pro, more <laughs> we need, Pro Bowls. We need more Pro Bowls some way, somehow. Either best of three or you have like half dozen Pro Bowl teams. More Pro Bowls means more bad football. Relatively speaking, that'll make the playoff football better football. It's definitely a good idea. If I want to see Nate that, today. Today. No, it's a horrible yeah, idea, right. but it's, we're, gonna, we're just going to pretend. I'm sorry you said that about your idea. <laughs> Another thing I want to change about the playoffs, yes, head-to-head -head is a great tiebreaker in the event of a tie, but then it's like, oh, what's their conference in record? What's their division record? What's their... It's so many stupid tiebreakers. Just do point differential. Suddenly, 
it makes garbage time exciting. Oh hey, oh we put in our we were we were beating them 32 to nothing. No, put your fucking foot on the gas and crush those Browns. For example, last year the Texans finished nine and seven. Yes, but had a negative point differential of something like. Minus 30? Something like that. It was bad. Yeah. No way to know, huh? There's no, no way, way to know. know. We can't Thanks that job, right? Way to be there. All right, no I'll, way to... I'll check, I'll check. Okay. Minus 49. Minus 49. Minus 49. That is the record of a losing team. And so I think the, the more that we can do to publicize the fact that point differential is something that more fans should be familiar with. The downside of this is I think Brady would want to play forever. Like, I think this would justify him really wanting to just be like, I'm going to have every single stat ever possible. That's fine. The longer Brady plays, the more likely his... This bone snap from osteoporosis. In a way that's televised and we get to witness it. Get to see him get Theismann. Could you imagine uh, how much better Joe Theismann's broken leg would be if it happened today with all those HD cameras? They showed that the replay so many times. I think partially because the cameras weren't good enough for them to fully capture like, this is bad. This is like Kosovo. But now they've like learned a little bit about certain things. They try not to show. Unless your Achilles ruptures and you can see that ripple up your calf because they just thought that was fun for some reason. It just went up his calf like it was blinds that got released. It looked like you were reeling a fish in and it was The other thing, why do number one seeds have to play the lowest seed remaining? There's so many times the sixth seed is way better than the seeds above them. They should have a choice. I'm cool with the division winners getting a home playoff game. I understand the NFL wants to do that, but a lot of times that makes a number five or number six seed like an 11 or 12 win team if they didn't win a strong, uh, a strong division. So it makes total sense that the number one seed should be like, hey, you know what? We don't want to play the lowest remaining seed. We want this crappy division winner that eats through a wild card game. One word, 12 syllables, relegation. Worst team in the league gets demoted further to they're the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns are no longer a singular franchise. That's a moniker for the worst team in the league. Right now, that won't really change anything because it'll just keep being the actual Cleveland Browns. Sure, sure. But one team has to wear that title. Okay. Of shame. It's not so much relegation as like you're the Cleveland Browns. Sure, I don't know what relegation means, but the British do it. With a win today, the San Francisco 49ers can escape being the Cleveland Browns. The relegation battle every year at the end of the season for the EPL. Now it's just like the the line is the, the bottom. Oh, we fell past the skid mark. Now that we've solved the broken NFL playoffs, really not that broken, but now that we've made it better, let's go to the mailbag. These are comments on the last show that we did. Ross Bachelor. Why do they call it a mailbag if it's a comment on the internet? Nice stand-up routine, buddy. Last comment of the week, Jackson Rarden said, I have watched like 10 of these now, and I don't know if I like them or not. Everyone's just making snap decisions. They watch like 10 seconds of the show, and like I, and, they, and the people comment, I hate these guys. You know what, Jackson, you're on the selection committee. That sort of dedication to making the right decision, and like I always say about upsides, just watch 10 to 15 episodes, you'll figure out whether you like it. I keep touching the stove, I can't tell if it's hot or not. <laughs> I feel bad for Jackson's girlfriend that he's been breaking up with for a year now. Wow, well that brings us to the end of another episode of Offsides. is an emotional journey that was often terrifying, but we fixed the playoffs of the NFL. Sorry, Alex had like a sneaky good joke, but he just like mumbled it. And I wish threw I knew the character's <laughs> name, but I don't. The, the green dude with the ears. After you said, the playoffs of the NFL or whatever. He was like, like some Star Wars character. And I laughed and then my brain fully processed that Alex was talking about Yoda, Yoda. Yoda. but has no clue who Yoda. I knew there was the one little dude that talks in reverse. You just get a zoom in, right? I got tears. I got tears.